China's companies are currently experiencing a wave of spin-off IPOs, and internet giants are also joining in. Following Alibaba's announcement of its restructuring and spin-off, JD.com has taken the lead in spinning off JD Industrial and JD Property Development and listing them in Hong Kong. Experts believe that this approach is about shedding baggage for companies and collectively raising funds, but for the Chinese Communist Party authorities, it is also intended to weaken the influence of private enterprises in their bosses. JD.com spins off two subsidiaries for listing, experts say it is an operation to shed baggage. On the evening of March 30th, JD.com announced in a statement on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange that it plans to spin off JD Industrial and JD Property Development and independently list them on the main board of the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. Currently, the JD.com group already has four listed companies, including JD.com, Dada Group, JD Health, and JD Logistics. JD Property Development mainly includes logistics parks, industrial parks, and other assets, and its customers are involved in new economy industries such as third-party logistics, e-commerce, manufacturing, and retail. According to the prospectus, JD Property Development's net profit for 2020-2022 was $2.81 billion, $1.49 billion, and $2.22 billion respectively, with some fluctuations. The profits of JD Property Development are not from its Mahan business, but rather from real estate. JD Industrial is a technology and service provider for industrial supply chains under JD.com. In 2020, 2021, and 2022, JD Industrial recorded a net profit of 340 million yuan, a net loss of 1.3 billion yuan, and a net loss of 1.3 billion yuan, respectively. On March 31st, Bocom International quoted the words of Wang Pengbo, chief analyst of Bocom International saying that investors' main concern now is whether the two companies are heavily reliant on the JD.com platform and whether they have the ability to generate independent profits. Economist Davy Huang analyzed that there are two situations for companies to go public. One is that they have a good project that requires more capital to expand and issue more shares, and the other is that they have completed the project with their own funds or raised funds, and then split and issue it, which is basically dumping the burden. He took JD Property Development as an example. In fact, it mainly relies on real estate related to warehousing and logistics. Its rental income comes from JD.com renting warehouses to itself, and it can determine how much rent to charge, which is essentially transferring money from one hand to the other. When it is about to go public, they slightly raise the rent. If JD.com does not use this kind of warehouse logistics and rents it out according to market prices, whether it can obtain this rent is a big question. So, they are just adding value to what they bought and then distributing it. On March 31, affected by the news of the two subsidiary companies listing after being spun off, JD.com's stock price rose 5.39% to 172 Hong Kong dollars. Davy Huang said that now many brokerages are speculating on such spin-offs to profit. These securities companies rely on stock trading for profit, so they often release many reports to encourage uninformed investors to speculate in stocks, and in the end, they pass on these asset burdens to the general public. Is it springtime for private enterprises? Expert, the Chinese Communist Party aims to eliminate the influence of private enterprise bosses. In a speech in 2020, Alibaba's founder Jack Ma publicly criticized the Chinese regulatory system. Since then, his ant group and other companies have faced severe scrutiny and rectification from Beijing. Ma withdrew from public activities and left the mainland for Japan, Spain, and other countries at the end of 2021. He suddenly returned to China on March 27 this year, and many analysts believe that there was a political transaction behind his return. After Ma's return, Alibaba Group immediately launched its largest structural reorganization in 24 years on March 28. According to the restructuring plan, under the Alibaba Group, there will be six business groups, All Yun Intelligence, Tobao Tmall Commerce, Local Services, Knao, International Digital Commerce, and Big Entertainment, as well as multiple business companies. Each business group has the possibility of independent financing and going public. Some mainland media claim that Ma's return has boosted the confidence of private enterprises. Ren Zeping, the vice chairman of China's Private Economy Research Association, posted on Weibo on March 28, claiming that another spring has come for the private economy. According to David Wang, the Chinese authorities are currently allowing private enterprises to issue stocks through spin-offs, providing them with an opportunity to make money. This may be related to the new leadership's encouragement of the development of private enterprises. 
This is to help private enterprises change their current predicament. As to whether it's springtime for private enterprises, it may require further observation. He believes that companies like JD.com and Alibaba, which rely mainly on domestic business in China, will seize this opportunity in order to continue operating in the Chinese market. Xie Tian, a professor at the Darla Moore School of Business at the University of South Carolina, said that Ma Yun's emergency recall, followed by the company's immediate spin-off into six separate entities to be listed separately, indicates that JD.com is also taking action. It appears that the Chinese Communist Party will apply this model to other major private enterprises as well, with the aim of weakening or eliminating the social influence of private enterprises, large companies, and big bosses. According to Xie Tian, after the spin-off, each company operates independently. For example, Ma Yun's company has six groups and six boards of directors, and Communist Party members and officials will certainly occupy the positions of these chairmen. This is equivalent to overriding the big shots of these private enterprises and eliminating their influence, which is the CCP's goal. Xie Tian also stated that it's not the spring for private enterprises, but rather their winter, as their companies are being dismantled. For instance, Ma Yun's, Jack Ma's, company has been split into six listed companies, and overall wealth may not decrease immediately, but it will be very difficult in the future, as others may not be as successful in running the business. The key is that Ma Yun himself is no longer a person who can call the shots, no longer a threat to the Communist Party, and his influence has disappeared. Under the pressure of China's economic downturn, Xi Jinping personally spoke out during the National People's Congress in March, claiming that private enterprises are our own people, and the new premier of the Chinese Communist Party, Li Keqiang, repeatedly promised to support the development and growth of private enterprises. Recently, Provincial and municipal secretaries have conducted intensive investigations into enterprises, emphasizing the optimization of the business environment. Xie Tian said that when the Chinese Communist Party cracked down on private enterprises, it was because these people were competing with the Communist Party for influence. Now, with the collapse of the entire Chinese economy and the losses incurred by state-owned enterprises, private enterprises' entrepreneurship can attract more capital and employ more people. Therefore, the Communist Party needs private enterprises and needs capitalism to once again save China's economy. Of course, it needs to establish an image to deceive private entrepreneurs and encourage them to come back, but Chinese entrepreneurs may not be so easily fooled anymore. In China, there is currently a wave of companies splitting and listing, with analysis suggesting that this is a collective effort to raise money by taking advantage of small investors. Regarding Alibaba's announcement of splitting into six major segments and seeking listings, JD.com had already split and listed earlier. Mainland Chinese media believe that this may indicate that more domestic internet giants will join the wave of split listings in the future. China expert Wang He stated that the Chinese Communist Party implemented financial reforms, including the A-share split rule, which was launched in January 2022. State-owned enterprises and central enterprises were the first to carry out the split. Other companies follow this way of making money and raising capital. Additionally, starting from February 17 of this year, the authorities began to implement a registration-based system for stock issuances, which has lowered the threshold for companies to go public, in order to encourage listings. Since the beginning of this year, more than 10 companies have announced their plans to list on the stock market through spin-offs, including several state-owned enterprises. On March 28, China Southern Airlines announced that its subsidiary, China Southern Airlines Cargo, will be listed on the Shanghai Stock Exchange. On the same day, Shinta Energy announced that it plans to spin off its subsidiary, Shinta Medical, and list it on the SciTech Innovation Board. Other companies that have announced their plans to spin off and list on the stock market this year include China Unicom, Hangzhou Hikvision, Wei Chai Power, China State Construction Engineering, Zingfa Group, Hungrui Medicine, Zhangzhou Coal Mining Machinery, Hisense Visual Technology. Zoomline Heavy Industry Science, and Technology, Nuktek Company, and China National Nuclear Corporation. Regenerate Response According to Wang He, an expert on China-related issues, the Chinese economy is not doing well, and the Chinese authorities hope to stimulate the Chinese capital market by increasing the number of listed companies, using the desire for money to stimulate investors to surf the capital market. However, the Chinese authorities have not given the capital market a good set of operating rules. The stock market in other countries is an indicator of economic conditions, but the Chinese stock market is relatively disconnected from the economic development trend and cannot function as an indicator. 
Their practice of splitting companies and implementing a registration system can only lead to the exploitation of ordinary people.